Have you been at this watercolor thing for a while and have yet to loosen up? I get you. And today is your day. Do you wanna paint loose watercolors but feel like you get super detailed every time you sit down to paint, no matter what you plan? Believe it or not, this is a super common frustration that I hear about all the time. And today we're gonna to talk about it and then we're gonna paint about it. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm about to drop a watercolor bomb that you might not have heard before. Painting loose watercolor in many ways is more difficult than super detailed. Yeah. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, you have a lot less brush strokes to get the same kind of point across. Now, of course, this is assuming that you're going after a realistic-ish impression of whatever it is that you're painting. If you're getting detailed, you have a lot more room to make the thing look like the thing that you're painting. Number two, and this is probably just a version of number one, but each brush stroke is so much more important and therefore needs to be that much more intentional. And that just feels heavy, right? Honestly, sometimes it's not the difficulty of the technique that catches us, it's just the emotional weight of it. Because let me tell you what, super realism, it's not easy either. But along the way, it can feel less stressful because each brushstroke doesn't have so much writing on it. And the third reason why loose watercolor can feel more difficult, and don't come at me for this one, but especially for beginners, materials really matter. And often with beginners, you don't have the best of materials, and rightly so, because you're just kind of like sticking your toe in the waters of watercolor, so you don't want to spend a fortune and not love it, right? But that can bite you in the butt, really. Did I just say bite you in the butt? But I mean it. As a beginner, subpar quality materials are going to kind of feel that much more obvious, that much quicker, especially with loose watercolor. Okay, now that we've got the chatting done, let's get into the painting. And this isn't just your like regular loose watercolor tutorial. I'm gonna show you how step by step. And I promise that's a good thing. Today, my friends, we're painting puddles. That's right. I know, we usually try to avoid puddles in watercolor for the most part, but today is all about color puddles and it is going to really change things for those of you looking to loosen up with watercolor. Supplies are easy, friends. The one caveat is use the best that you have because, you know, like I mentioned before, but don't worry about whatever the best is. Ultimately, I want you to paint with me today. Like this is definitely a paint with me moment and I just want you to paint. So I don't care what you've got, grab it and let's go. Okay, that was like kind of like a creative contradiction, but the, the most important thing is let's just, we're gonna paint and yeah, we're gonna do it now. I am using arches. I'm using my Art for Joy Sake palette. I've got a bunch of different pencils. I've got like a 2H and a 2B and an HB and I think a 4B, I don't know. The type of pencils doesn't matter. Just grab a pencil and if it's not super sharpened, the better still and just grab your favorite watercolor brush. And you don't want it to be a teeny tiny one because remember, we're making big puddles, big color puddles today. Okay, this is super important. And spraying down your palette has probably never been more important than in this particular project. Wanna get those colors juicy. If you've never sprayed your palette before, this is the day to try it, friends, because we want those little wells of color nice and syrupy and juicy and lovely. Let's do it. Okay, so in general, I am going to be creating a floral composition. I hesitate in even telling you that at this point, because really, let, I didn't say that. We're going to make a puddle that's your favorite color. Right at the moment, my favorite color is this like peachy, pinky, corally thing that I've got going on in my palette. So I am making a puddle. If you're using synthetic brushes, you're going to have to load that brush more than if you're using a natural bristle brush that holds more water and paint. So I'm going to get some pinky, corally, puddly stuff in there. And then I'm gonna get some green, but I don't want you thinking like about flowers specifically. I just want this to be extremely abstract and super fun and messy and crazy and chaotic, just like my description is right now. Now, pull out that pencil, friends, and you are going to swirl around the pencil using heavy pressure right through that paint. Me, I'm going right through the pink. I'm swirling and I'm bouncing as I'm going. Let's look at that again. I'm going around and around, and yes, I'm going right through the paint. This is something that I have named watercolor dragging because, you know, 
I just like to make up names of things, even if they already have a name and they don't need to be renamed. Um, there's a couple of videos where I do that below. Um, but anyway, drag that pencil through the paint. Just drag and drag. And yes, it's kind of looking like a rose, but let's not get stuck there. Now you've got the green puddles. You can kind of drag them out, drag that pencil through the watercolor. And the heavier your puddle is, the more that color, the more that paint and water is going to get drug with the graphite as you go. And if you look close, you're getting some super duper neato effects when that dragging happens. And by the way, I don't really think watercolor dragging exists. I, I do truly believe that I made this one up. And if I'm wrong, let me know in comments because, well, I probably don't have to tell you. You'll come for me. It's okay. Okay, the basic point here, friends, I just wanna fill this page. I wanna fill this page with puddles and then drag all of my pencils through the puddles to kind of create something that resembles a flower, a bud, a leaf, maybe a berry. That's it, friends. We're just pencil dragging through color puddles. Yeah, can you say that three times fast? Pencil color dragging, apparently I can't even say it one time, slow. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Notice my pencil hold here. This is an alternative pencil hold. I have a whole video about it. I'll link it below. And this is what I want to say about this. I encourage you to try this pencil hold, okay? Because it ultimately gives you less control. And here is where we come back to the topic at hand, which is how do I loosen up? How do I start painting loose watercolor when there's so much anxiety surrounding it? Number one, you know I've got a list. I love the lists, the numbered lists. Yeah, they're awesome. Okay, number one, use your materials in a way that on purpose gives you less control. And this pencil hold, my friends, is one perfect example. Because when you relinquish control, you kind of have to just like deal with it. When you force yourself to have less control over your supplies, you figure out how to deal with it. You figure out how to be uncomfortable and you figure out how to go with the flow of the uncomfortable that can lead you somewhere really spectacular. All right, now I'm down here in the bottom right and don't worry, I'm gonna get back to the numbered list. So I'm just kind of doing a peach puddle and I've decided I'm gonna make this a side view. But remember, when you make the puddle, try your hardest not to actually think about what it's going to look like after you apply the pencil. Just like force yourself, just like shut that part of your brain down and be like, nope, this is just a puddle right now. Can you tell how unbelievably excited I am about this particular little project we got going on here? It's so fun. If you agree with me, if you're having a good time, I need you to do two things. Number one, I'd love if you could give this video a boop, friends. That is a like in Christy speak. And uh, yeah, it just, it helps the channel. It helps me. It makes me feel good about myself. Apparently I need a boost of self-esteem, but that is a topic for another video on another day. And the second thing I'd love for you to do for me is head into comments. Let me know, are you having a good time? Does this feel like a project you're doing or better yet, are you actually painting with me? Cause you, if you remember, I mean, I really, I asked you to paint with me earlier in the video. So I hope you are. Anywho, let's get back to the puddles. Okay, number two, another thing that you can do to kind of force yourself to loosen up. And this is gonna feel, sound weird, all the things, but time yourself. That's right. I am working on about a seven inch square piece of watercolor paper. So number one, I know that I don't really need more than, absolutely don't need more than 15 minutes to, to kind of fill this space. So I just highly recommend limiting your time because if you, if you make it unended, and yes, we wanna get into that joy state, into the flow state, and just really sink into our experience. And if that happens, great. But if you are actively seeking to become more comfortable with loose painting, you need to build some new habits. And one way to do that is kind of restructure your old habits. So if you let yourself go all the time and you get deep into the detail of your painting, you know that you know kind of the deep I'm talking about, where like you're a half hour in, you're an hour in, and you realize that your face is so close to the paper that it's about to just like smack your desk. Yeah, timing yourself is gonna boom, pull you out of that and it's going to help to start restructuring some of those habits. Restructure, restructuring, whatever, you know what I mean. 
And a third thing that you can do to kind of force this loosening up of your skills. And this is kind of the crux of what we're doing here. It's use your materials in a way that they weren't traditionally designed to be used. And if you're new here, you're very welcome for your epiphany today. I just gave you a creative epiphany, I hope. If you're not new here, then you're like, ah, oh, Christy, I know what you're talking about. This is old hat. But seriously, friends, mixing it up, shaking yourself up out of those old, traditional, the way you've always done it kind of techniques and the way that you approach the use of your supplies can absolutely shake up and completely change the visual results that you're used to getting on the page. It's kind of like the definition of insanity. And I am by no means saying that you are insane. I am, however, a little bit creatively insane, hence I'm kind of forcing you to paint with color puddles. But anyway, friends, seriously, if we continue to do this, the same thing, the same way over and over again, but we think we're gonna get different results, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I know you know this, but sometimes we need that reminder and hopefully that is my purpose here today. Okay, let's get back to the puddles. I mean, I know you've kind of been listening to me jabber on and watching me paint the puddles, but let's actually get back to the puddles. All right, I'm feeling like I got my mojo here, friends. And so I'm kind of just getting into things a little differently. So I am creating a background. And at this point, yes, if you've been a super good student and you've been not thinking too much about the end result and you've just been really enjoying your puddles and dragging your pencil, okay, now go ahead. Give yourself a little bit more freedom to think about the result. So right now I'm like, ooh, I really want a background. And so I've created a big long puddle in a couple different areas throughout my quote unquote composition. I mean, I don't know if we could really call it a composition because it's just crazy, but it's fun. And then I'm sketching into it, dragging my pencil around, and I've even got the paper towel out now and I'm blotting and scrubbing that paper towel around. Here is the big, the big lesson. You've been waiting for this one. And I can't say that this is the, the last like awesome point that I'm gonna have in this video. So you're probably gonna wanna stick around. But this is a big point. Being willing to experiment and let go for a time of the old way of doing things begets more experimentation. I mean, that's basically the, the definition of a habit. You do the thing and you do the thing more and then you kind of just do the thing without even thinking about doing the thing. You got me? Yeah. Seriously, experimentation begets experimentation. So at this point in your painting, you're probably like, you're, you're feeling it. You're like, you're not even thinking about like grabbing a smaller brush and getting into it and adding shadows and oh, making this petal pop forward. No, you're just like into it. So let yourself enjoy that freedom and run with it a little bit. Okay, how are we feeling about the puddles? Do you feel I'm absolutely certifiable and you're just like done and you're like, this isn't for me? I actually would like to know why and yeah, let me know in comments. If you're having a blast, if you've had a creative epiphany, if you've had a moment where you're like, I never thought about this this way before and I think this is going to help me, go ahead into comments, not for my sake, but for the community's sake, because the epiphany that you have, the aha moment that you have could be the same for someone else. And that is really exciting. And you know what else is exciting? When you give my videos a boop, that's a like. Okay, that was really, really bad. Moving on. So you might be wondering, okay, Christy, this is cool and all, I like it, the puddles are fun, I tried it, but how does this translate into me actually loosening up in the style of like modern loose watercolor that I'm after? It translates because next time I want you to try this, but a little differently, maybe a little less puddly, a little less water on the page and just really think about your brush strokes. You maybe want to recreate this piece, but without the pencil dragging, right? Maybe instead of the pencil being drugged through the wet color, load up a smaller brush with a lot, a lot of paint and not a lot of water and drag that around the page a bunch of times and see what happens. Keep expanding on this project and keep building those habits of avoiding the traditional way you've done things. And I can't even imagine what's gonna happen for you. Like, I mean, can't imagine because it's just that good. 
Now, you heard me mention intentional brush strokes, that your loose watercolors require more intentional brush strokes. This video is all about that, and it's the perfect follow-up to what we did here today. So until next time, my dear friends, I wish you so much loose watercolor happy painting.